things and trials, but Lord, you are faithful to us, and that's why we're here in your house again. Lord, many of us might be tired and weary and dealing with certain things, 
But Lord, that's why we're here to give it all to you. That Lord, you can take full control. Lord, we're not here to see anybody, but we're here to see you. And we're here to talk to you. And most importantly, we're here to hear what you have to say to us. Lord, dwell in our praise and our worship. Lord Jesus, we want to commit everyone in this place into your hands. Also remembering the one who will preach the gospel for us tonight. Lord, bless him and also our pastor and his family. Bless him. Lord Jesus, we want to commit it all into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. As we stand to our feet, can we sing the song, We'll Walk in the Light. We'll walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light of all oh, will walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light of. in the light of yes we'll walk 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 in the light of all oh, we'll walk in the light walk walk in the light walk walk in the light walk in the light of all oh, we'll verses to this song. I'll sing the three verses and then we'll go into walk in the light. We didn't let the devil win. Oh, we didn't let the devil win. No, we didn't let the devil win. No, we didn't let the devil win. Now let's walk in the light. Walk, walk in the Satan lost the battle. Oh, Satan lost the battle. Oh, Satan lost the battle. Now let's walk in the light. Walk, oh, in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light of God. Jesus won the victory, oh, Jesus won the victory, oh, Jesus won the victory, oh, Jesus won the victory. Now let's walk in the light, walk, walk in the light, walk in the light. In the light of all, oh, let's walk in the light. Walk, walk in the light. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light of God. Oh, Satan 
lost the battle. Oh, Satan lost the battle. Yes, Satan lost the battle. Satan lost the battle. No, we didn't let the devil win. No, we didn't let the devil win. No, we didn't let the devil win. Oh, we didn't let the devil win. Oh, let's walk in the light. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light of God. Oh, Zen. Hallelujah. Oh, Zen. Hallelujah. Oh, Zen. Hallelujah. over to Jerusalem. We are marching over to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. We are marching over to Jerusalem. Oh, we are marching over to Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, 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 oh, up the valley, down the mountain, Jerusalem is my, oh, up the valley, down the mountain, Jerusalem. Oh. 
Pastor begins to make himself ready. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the photos. He's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, oh, come home. You Yes. 
passing, passing from you and from me. Oh, now shadows are gathering and deathbeds are coming, coming for you. you saints. I'd like to greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Just happy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, there's news that's difficult to go by without us mentioning. Uh, many, many of you might have encountered that. I've just had to check on the official website, uh, branham.org, to try and confirm. But uh, it looks like uh, our brother, brother Billy Paul, is passed on. Amen. And we just want to remember the Branham family in, the, in our prayers. And not just the family, the saints. Amen. Uh, Brother Billy Paul was a significant figure in the faith. And there were things, testimonies associated with him. Amen. And many people that were encouraged as he traveled the world and shared testimonies of what the Lord did during his time together with the prophet. And obviously, sometimes uh, these are not easy moments uh, for many a saint. And so we want to pray that the Lord will just give us grace 
Amen. And to strengthen those that need strengthening, to comfort those that need comforting, and to make his word and his promises plain to his people, that people may serve the Lord. Amen. And not be shaken. Amen. And so we just want to also appreciate the Lord tonight uh, for our precious brother, Medicine Saidi. He's still with us, but he's flying over to Melbourne tonight. So we had to try and we are trying to milk as much as we can. Amen. And so he still has to preach even before we take him to the airport. Praise the Lord. So we want to appreciate the Lord that the brother yielded to the request. I'm not too sure if it can be classified as a request or arm twisting, but whatever it is, we want to rejoice and we are under expectation. He has not traveled alone. He's traveled with his precious wife, Sister Hilda, who's right in the middle there. Amen. Want to appreciate. Amen. Sometimes, uh, you know, the men, sometimes ministers, you stand in front and people see you, but there's forces behind the scenes that probably are doing much more work than the one who's standing in front. And so we want to salute the gallant women. Amen. The gallant support system. Uh, even to salute the family back home uh, that has also remained and just appreciate them, appreciate their labors as they try their best to serve God and to be of service to the bride of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So I believe we came expecting. How many came expecting? All right. Let's just bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we are here. We are your children. And we've come to the house of the Lord. And we came because you loved us. You loved us first. You found us first. We were not even seeking you. But Father, you were seeking us. You were calling us in a way that you knew that we would answer. Father, Lord, and we continue to answer to the call. Even the call to prayer, the call to go to the house of the Lord for service. We feel it in our hearts. And we come to the house of the Lord. And now that we are gathered here, Father... You have promised us in your word that you shall be amongst us. For you said where two or three are gathered in my name. Father, we are gathered for the revealed word of the day. We are gathered, Father, O God, Father, in your name. For the preaching of the gospel is the unfolding of the mystery of your name. And we are here, Father, to listen. Father, to hear your word, Father, and to be touched and to be quickened. Bless your people that came in divine presence. Father, we want to... I uh, appreciate you, Father, for the life that you gave our precious brother, Billy Paul. Father, and the years of service that you gave him. Father, oh God, and we want to commit the family. Like any other family, Father, they grieve for a loved one. It's a gap, Father, oh God, that seemingly cannot be closed. But, Father, oh God, we pray for the comfort that comes from above. That you may comfort your children. Comfort that family, Father. Oh God, comfort the saints, that have labored with the brother, loved him, appreciated him. Sometimes, oh God, until we do not see it coming. But Father, Lord Jesus, your seasons, Father, oh God, you have set for us. Each one of us, you have given us times and seasons. We pray that you help the family. Father, oh God, give them the comfort and the peace that surpasses understanding. We pray, Father, oh God, remembering the saints across the world. Remembering ourselves as a church, as a body of believers, individual and collective, we pray that you be with us, even in these moments, remembering, Father, O God, what is happening in the Middle East. Father, O God, Israel, thy people, Father, O God, Father, in the wars that are happening in that region, thou knowest all things, Father. We only do what the scriptures have taught us to do. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Father, O God, and how that peace comes, thou knowest, Father. But our prayer is that you be in the world. And Father, as we look up and open our eyes and see these things happening around us, may something be provoked. May a desperation, Father, come in our hearts. May a preparation start, Father, at a different measure and level to know, Father, that, O God, we stand in the fulfillment of time. Help us, Father, as we look at your timepieces and see all these things falling in this place. Father, we pray, grant us grace to have rapturing faith in our hearts. Father, be with us, be with your people that have gathered tonight. We thank you. Speak to our hearts 
as we commit the remainder of the service, your servant at your hands, that you use him as a mouthpiece, connected to the throne above by an unfused connection to be a blessing to the bride, to give out spiritual food that is in due season. In the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to appreciate you all for your prayers, your support. Amen. We are doing well. Uh, the little one is doing well. I think when I made the announcement the other day, I didn't say his name. So his name is Jesse. His middle name is Miguel, which is Spanish for Michael. And the surname remains unchanged. <laughs> so God bless you. His surname is Chikerema. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he's, he's gaining his weight. He's growing. All is well. So I want to thank you for your prayers and for your support. And Sister Abigail continues to improve. She's doing well by God's grace. Amen. And Joseph is keeping us busy as usual. But we want to appreciate the Lord. I uh, want to also salute, I see the Impala family. Amen. They are not visitors. They are one of us. Amen. Hallelujah. We see you Sunday. We can't announce you as visitors. Amen. So even to point to your seats, we just leave you to find your seats. Amen. But be comfortable. We, we, we are happy that we are in the house of the Lord together. Amen. As we invite the men of God, we sing once again, blessed be, blessed be. Amen. Blessed be, oh, blessed be, blessed be your name. Bless you. I want to greet you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. God richly bless you. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we are back in the house of the Lord. David of old said, I was glad when they took me back to the house of God. He says, I entered there with thanksgiving in my heart. Lord, God Almighty, that is our, even our desire. The joy that comes from serving you. There's no better place to be than to come to the house of prayer. Lord God Almighty, we pray that you undertake for us. Thank you for the pastor. Thank you for these wonderful people that, Lord God Almighty, our junctions have met. We pray that, Lord God Almighty, you undertake for each and every one of them. It has fallen on my Lord tonight to stand behind the sacred desk. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, he said, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me. May the Holy Ghost, which is the after speaker, come down tonight and speak to your children. May it give hope to the hopeless. May it give life to those that, Lord God Almighty, the enemy is trying to rob every circumstance. But we pray as we hand over the service unto thee, that, Lord, you may have the preeminences that you speak to our hearts in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray believing. Amen. And amen. Amen. While least you're still standing, let's turn our Bibles uh, to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7. We are so happy to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Um, we have had a wonderful time, uh, but uh, 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 we trust by the Lord's grace we'll be back to Melbourne uh, tonight on our flight back. And uh, we hope to see you soon. Amen. Thank you very much for your hospitality. And uh, we'll certainly come back. And we felt at home, far away from home. Amen. And it has been a pleasure speaking to you and preaching to you. You are such a, a, a wonderful congregation. Amen. I've been exposed to many people, preached to many people, many nations. Uh, but uh, uh, you are unique in your own way. Amen. Uh, there's one thing that I just ask you. Uh,
Just keep the unity of the faith and have brotherly kindness in your midst. Amen. And don't let the devil separate you. Amen. So one preacher said, uh, uh, like, uh, just be under your pastor and you grow faster. <laughs> Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I was tempted to sing happy birthday to uh, Sister Beulah there. He has got a birthday today, but uh, for the sake of time, <laughs> amen. But I want to say happy birthday to you. Amen. God bless you. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20. And the Bible says, And let every man abide in the same calling wherein he is called. Art thou called, being a servant, care not for it. But if thou mayst be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord, being the servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise also he that is called, being free, is Christ's servant. You are all bought with a price. Be not servants of men. Brethren, let every man when he is called, wherein he is called, therein abide with God. Amen. May God add blessings to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Amen. My title to tonight, uh, Your Position Activates the Anointing. Amen. Your Position Activates the Anointing. Amen. Let me tell you tonight, you can never have success as long as you are not anointed. You must be anointed. Amen. The Holy Ghost must come upon your life and anoint you. You must know your position. Amen. So your position activates the anointing. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Colossians, it says, uh, even evil men were created for evil days. Judas Iscariot was on his position. The devil is on his position. But the greatest, uh, the greatest mistakes that is happening is you not knowing your position. You must know why you are here. The reason of your coming. Why God brought you here. Why are you here in church? Amen. I believe I'm not a biological accident. I believe I'm here by predestination. Amen. And I believe my destiny is not in a geographical location. Amen. He knows the reason why I'm here. Amen. So the Bible is telling us in the book of Corinthians, let every man abide. Amen. In the same calling way in he has been called. If you are a servant, hallelujah. Amen. He says, are you called being a servant? Amen. Care not for it. Amen. But rather thou mayst be made free. Use it rather. Amen. So there is a purpose why you are here. There are certain things that you must identify why God brought you here. Amen. I believe I'm speaking to people that have a purpose here. Amen. And I believe I'm speaking to people that believe they are not a biological accident. God ordained your footsteps. Your timelines, God, divide them. Amen and amen. Are we together? So let's move on to the book of uh, um, uh, Psalms 84, verse 10. Psalms 84, verse 10. The Bible says in Psalms 84, verse 10, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Amen. Amen. Even the lowest position, as long as you fulfill your purpose. Amen. The psalmist says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God and become the king of America. Amen. So the psalmist is telling us 
the importance of knowing your position. Hallelujah. Amen. You must know who you are. Amen. You must know when we're flying into Australia and every announcement that we're hearing was always questioning about the seed. We don't want no seed here. We don't want, uh, you, must not, you must not bring any foreign seed. Even though everything you have been using, make sure it's properly cleaned because they are afraid of seed. Amen. And the million dollar question I have to you tonight, what seed are you? Amen. The spoken word is the original seed. When you know who you are, when you know the type of a seed that you are, brother, sister, your story is finished. Amen. When you plant corn, within two weeks, you start to see it germinating. And the first thing that comes up is the leaves. It's a seed. But when you plant wheat, after two weeks, you don't see anything. And the first thing that comes out, there are no leaves. Maybe after two months, then you start to see the leaves. So sometimes, you start to see that brother, his thing is getting right. And then you see maybe you are still in the dark. Nothing is happening in your life. But you must not worry and look at that brother. You must know what seed you are. You must know circumstances around you. There is a time and a season and a purpose. Amen. We are not one side fit all. And things don't happen at the same time. Amen. If you are a mango tree, you start to have flowers at a certain season. Amen. You might not even have the flowers. Hallelujah. But if you are a banana tree, the very time that you germinate, you start with leaves. Are you here tonight? Amen. Because you must know what seed you are. And I believe I'm speaking to genuine seed. The one that came from God. You will show forth, you will show forth your glory in his season. Amen. Congressman Abshaw was not healed when he was 25. He had an accident when he was 11. God allowed him 67 years being bound in a wheelchair. And Brother Branham, and God told Brother Branham, he says, God wanted his last days on earth to be so good. God took him out of the wheelchair. Amen. But if it was you, at 25 years, you would have forsaken the Bible. You have forsaken the message and say, this thing does not work. But you must know your season. And you must know what seed that you are. Are you with me tonight? Amen. So Brother Branham says in a message, uh, the power of transformation. He says, oh, paragraph 74, preached 1965 on the 30th of November. He says, yeah, oh, if you could only learn that, that what part of word are we? We must take our place no matter what it is. There must come a time when you know what part of the word are you. And you must take that part. Amen. I think of a little sister here in a wheelchair. Sometime, how many faithful prayers have been made over her? Then we don't understand. So we just commit it to the Lord. She is a flower here among you with her pleasantness and everything. See that we can go uh, get up and go around her, how she could be, how she could long that. And yet she is pleasant just the way she sits. I'm always inspired to watch that little lady because we all believe in healing. Amen. Amen. Are we together? That's why even Sister Hetty Wright, Amen. That's why Sister Hetty Wright, the uh, uh, young sister, was not healed. But that was a perfect condition. We know what was in her. We know God could heal her at any time, at any circumstances. But that saved a purpose of God. Amen. You are the Bible that somebody is watching you. You are the Bible 
that people are seeing. They must see the purpose why you are here. Whatever it is, paragraph 76, it says whatever it is, that's what we want. And I believe it was David who said, I'd rather be a dormant at the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. You see, no matter what it is, take my place. I don't care what you're going through, brother, sister. The most important thing, there is your place. Sometimes you have to separate from everything that's dear on earth to you. To take your position that, is, that God has called you to, I'm sure you can read between the lines. When it comes to your position, you can say goodbye. When it comes to the Christ and to the message, when I'm taking my position, friends can forsake me. Lovers can disappoint you. But he says, Lord, I'll be with you, even in you, until the end of the day. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. Amen. The most important thing that you must guard in your life is your position. Is your place. Hallelujah. God put you in that place. Amen. Are we together? Whatever it is, sometimes you have to separate from everything. So dear or not to take your position that God has called you. I'm sure you can read, the, read between the lines what I'm saying. Sometimes the very dearest person on earth, you have to shake hands with them and take your position in Christ to where God has called you. There's a time to say goodbye, brother. There's time to say, my tent is no more peace. I feel something, a pull inside of me. I feel God is calling me to deeper depths and to higher heights. Amen. There's got to come to that time. And when you move to your position, there's something that happens. Amen. Amen. Because he places you somewhere because it is his way of doing it. By renewing your mind, obey the word of God regardless of what the prize is. Amen. You have to move to your position. Amen. You have to move to your God-ordained position. Amen. When I'm seated in the bench, I'm just like you. But when I stand on the pulpit, the Bible says, an angel standing on the pulpit has got higher authority than the one that has got wings. And he says, the closest place to heaven is the pulpit. Do you know why? I might come here discouraged, but when I stand on the pulpit, I'm at my position. Something is activated. I might come sick. Hallelujah. But when I stand on the post of duty, something is activated. Hallelujah. Because your position releases an anointing. Your position, hallelujah, gives you the things that God has put in you. Amen. So Brother Branham was asked, uh, person number 109, he was asked, how does one know their rightful position in the body of Christ? He says, that's a good one. Very good. That's the kind of question among us many of us here tonight, how do you really rightfully know? And I'm presuming that this brother wants to know what position, what in Christ, what part of Christ do I play? The sons of Sceva one day came and they saw a woman that was demon possessed and they went and said, in the name of Jesus Christ, we cast you out. Come out. You know that demon spoke back and says, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? An unidentified praying object. Who are you? Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Who sent you here? What's your DNA? Even demons observe rank and file. If there is anything that will make the devil bow down in our presence, is knowing who we are. Amen. 
That's why it says, even the, hallelujah, the weakest of Christians, when he begins to pray, the very foundation of hell shakes. It's not about one hour in prayer. It's about your position. Your position releases an anointing. Amen. The human being even is the one or even the weakest species on earth. He still remains powerful above every circumstance. It's not about what God, it's not about what you think you are. It's about what God has made you to be. Amen. Once you move to your position, brother, sister, you activate a certain anointing. Something comes up. Hallelujah. God comes down and positionally places you. Amen. Oh, church of the living God. Let's move to our rightful position. Amen. Now, for instance, I would like this brother to give the best answer I know. Your position in Christ is revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. And then if you want to know whether the Holy Spirit or not, found out whether he blesses what you are doing or not. If he blesses him, then that's him. If he doesn't, then that's not him. Who reveals your position? The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost positionally places you. Your position is not known by the pastor. The Holy Ghost reveals your position. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost places you. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost places you, brother, sister, it's unlimited. Hallelujah. There is no weapon formed against you that shall prosper. And every voice that is rising in judgment, you will condemn because you are at your position. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why Brother Branham, when he stood on the pulpit, you say, I take every spirit in this building under my feet for the glory of God. What was it? It's about position. Even tonight, I take every spirit in this building under my feet for the glory of God. It's about position. God made me. Hallelujah. I like what Brother Billy Paul said. He says, God made me his son. Hallelujah. And he made me the prophet's son. It's about position. And it was when he was made a prophet's son. When Brother Branham was preaching, hallelujah, in California, hallelujah. And when I was preaching, he says, oh, I see Brother F.F. F. Bosworth here. He says, when he went to Cape Town in South Africa, a man like Brother Bosworth, he says, Brother Branham, God does not speak with you only. He also speaks to us. And he was saying, let's, let's go to Cape Town. When God had told me, let us go to Debbie. And a man, Brother F.F. F. Bosworth, a person that I love so dear, a man that is a second, uh, that I call my second father, he comes and he tells me that. And Billy Paul says, Daddy, don't listen to those preachers. When he says, Daddy, don't listen to those preachers, that was in the afternoon and he, right there in the morning when Brother Branham could not sleep, three o'clock, hallelujah, he found favor in the eyes of an angel. The angel of the Lord came and he says, does he want to see me? Hallelujah. When you are in your position, you activate an anointing. When you move to your position, the supernatural will start to move in your place. Amen and amen. Are we together? So, it says, like somebody said to me not long ago, the Lord called me to preach. I said, well, then preach. <laughs> amen. And I think, you know, Satan, if he can guess, get somebody to act like that and deceive them, that's what he wants to do. Amen. If God has called you to preach, preach. Go in the trains. Go in the streets. Preach. Don't tell us you are a preacher and then you are waiting for a Sunday service. John Wesley said, the pulpit is my world. If God has called you to preach, don't preach. And you can't even preach to your wife. Your own congregation. You can't even convince it. Then you want to convince the whole world. <laughs> and you can't live a life above sin. Then you say, I'm a preacher. What do you want to preach to us? Amen. Are we together? And the greatest hindrance to the gospel is not somebody living in sin. It is a righteous man, but taking of a spiritual blessing is not entitled to. A man who is not supposed to be a preacher, 
who is better as a corn, as a farmer, but is preaching. Amen. You must move to your position. Are we together? Amen. You must move to your position. The book of Galatians tells us, chapter 4, verse 1. You can move on to that one. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be the Lord of all. You might be the heir to the, an inheritance, but as long as you still behave like a child, you have no difference between you and a servant. Though you are the Lord of all. The Bible is telling us, as long as you don't take your position, you will remain a child. Though you possess all things. Amen. It says, the heir, as long as he is a child, he differs nothing from a servant. And when you read the book of Ecclesiastics, it tells us, I saw princes walking and servants on horses. Because the servants told the princesses that if you go on a horse, you break your back. And they believed the story. Sons of kings walking, servants on horses. Because they told the servants, they told the sons of kings, if you go on a horse, you will break your back. And that's why, brother, sister, you are told if you believe the supernatural, you start to act funny. Something is, you, you are not being moved to your position. You, when you start to believe the impossible, brother, sister, these things are difficult. The moment you start to believe like that, there's no anointing that you are releasing. Amen. And here, as the scripture has said, as long as you remain a child, you are no different from a servant. Though these things belong to you. Amen. And what makes you to inherit those things is to move to your position. When you move to your position, then those things become yours. But as long as you remain with that mentality, as long as you alienate yourself from the commonwealth of Israel, you will remain in your position. Do you know why you are still on the same level? Do you know why you are still going back on the same path over and over again for so many years? Brother Branham says it's a death cycle. You are coming to the same place over and over again. Same pattern. It is because you have not found your position. Amen. But I remember Joseph in the Bible. They call him a dreamer, but he only dreamt two dreams. The two dreams that Joseph had made him in his position. And when he was on his position, hallelujah, when he went into the house of Pharaoh, he became a dreamer. Amen. When he was taken into prison and everyone around him, because when he was in his position, he activated a certain anointing. Even in prison, people begin to dream. Even when he's prison, right there at the palace, the king began to have a mysterious dream. Hallelujah. Not because they ate chili last night, they begin to have a spiritual dream. The one that could make sure joy is taken away. And he says, I've got this dream, but it is taken away from me. And he says, I'm looking for an interpreter. And right there in prison, everyone is dreaming. Do you know why? Because Joseph was on his position. Amen. Let me tell you, brother, sister, even your very suppressive boss, when you move into your position, hallelujah, everything will get loose, hallelujah. Amen. That you are in that position because you are never in that position. Amen. But if you move to that position, Amen. every situation around you, it will change. Amen. Joseph released an anointing. Amen. People around you begin to have spiritual dreams. The butler had a spiritual dream. The baker had a spiritual dream. Hallelujah. The king had a dream. 
And all these dreams were waking, were waiting for the, hallelujah, the interpreter of dreams. That was Joseph. What took Joseph out of prison was not a presidential pardon. What took Joseph out of prison was interpreting their purpose in this life. Amen. When you are in your position, you will activate an anointing. Let me tell you tonight, you are moving to your position. And before you even know it, you have activated a certain pattern. Amen. Your prison bars will open. Amen. You said the captives will go free because you have activated that anointing. Your position releases an anointing. Amen and amen. The believer's position. Amen. Amen. So at one point in time, that's why Brother Branham preached the message, the present stage of my ministry. Amen. And he says, it's not the change of the minister, but it's, it is the change of how God uses the minister. Amen. It's not like there was a new Branham, but it is the way God, the way God has changed how he uses him. The first time, he was using the gift. The second time, he was now using the vision. He could see people's lives. And the last time, he's using the, hallelujah, that poor power. The vindication of his ministry is just the way God changes the, he visits you. Sometimes it might be probably first pool, second pool, third pool, but how God is using you when you move to your position. You activate that anointing. Let me tell you tonight, some people are waiting for your arrival. Their things won't move until you come. Some people just want to hear you speak. When you speak, brother, every situation will pacify. But because you are not in your position, nothing is happening. But when you move to your position, something is going to happen. Amen. Amen. So Brother Branham was asked that question. Amen. So, uh, okay, let's go to the book of Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. The reason why you came here on earth, you are solving a certain problem. Are you getting that? The reason why you are here on earth, you are solving a certain problem. You are here to do that. You were created to solve that problem. Luke chapter 19 verse 2 and the Bible says there was a man named Zacchaeus which was the chief among the publicans and he was rich and he sought to see Jesus for who he was and could not for the press because he was of little stature and he ran before and climbed up a sycamore tree to see him for he was to pass that way. Amen. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Amen. Do you know that sycamore tree, so many trees, so many sycamore trees in that area have been hewed down for firewood. So many sycamore trees were cut down to make poles. But God protected this sycamore tree for the sake of Zacchaeus. Before the foundation of the world, God put that sycamore tree so that Zacchaeus, a man of little stature, when he comes, he will have some way to go over and say, say, we would see Jesus. Amen. Among all the sycamore trees in that area, that sycamore tree had a purpose. If God could foreordain a tree, hallelujah, how about you, brother, sister? How about you, brother, sister? You are the apple of his own eye. God is, has God placed something in you. 
that must save your people. That is here for that people. That psychometry, no matter what was going to happen in the land, nothing was going to touch it until the purpose of God, according to election, has got to stand. Let me tell you tonight, nothing is going to happen to you until your purpose here on earth is fulfilled. And when you climb that tree, brother, sister, something is activated. When Zacchaeus is on top of that tree, Christ has got to look up. When Zacchaeus is in a position, Christ has got to be activated something. And he says he did not know who the man was. But the moment he looks up, he says, Zacchaeus, come down. And everyone that was around him realized they did not meet before. And why does he know him by name? And he says, tonight I'll come down at your place and have supper. There was an activation of anointing because Zacchaeus was at his place. Jesus Christ was at his place. And the psychomotry is at his place. When you are at your original place where God placed you, you activate an anointing. Hallelujah. I don't believe you just came here for a church. Hallelujah. I, came, I believe you came here to meet him. Amen. And as soon well as I'm standing here, your situation will change. Amen. Circumstances will change. If you are looking for the Holy Ghost, God will fill you. Because you are in the right place. And when you came to service, you said, you surely pass this way. You said, surely I will meet him. Amen. And let me tell you, brother, sister, you are at the right place. Yes. Hallelujah. There was a rich young ruler. He asked the right person. He asked the right person. He came to the right person, asked the right question, and he got the right answer. Amen. Let me tell you this after this evening. You have come to the right place and you have got the right question and you are getting the right answer. And it's going to activate an anointing yes. upon your life. Because you are here. Hallelujah. God is obligated to come to you. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their pages. God is here tonight to change who you are. Because when you move to your position, you activate an anointing. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you tonight, you are not plan B. You are not an option. You are plan A. Amen. God never made you plan B. He made you plan A. God has no option over you. He can't choose you. He can't choose any other person. God ordained you to eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why Joseph of Aramathia in the Bible is the only man that could go and take the body of Jesus Christ. He was saving his people. He knew the politics of the day. He says, no, don't worry. He says to the Jews, don't worry, I can go. I can speak to them. And he went there and says, he did not, he did not come and say, hey, you know, how much you are going to pay? You know, he just came stressed. Can I have his body? I'll bury it. Do you know what position he does? The moment Joseph of Aramathia sees it, everyone around says, ah, if it's Joseph, let him have it, the body of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, brother, sister, the moment you are going to speak it, you release an anointing. If you are in your position. Hallelujah. The back has got to stop here. Amen. You can say, brother, sister, you can make a declaration. Nothing is going to happen. You can make a declaration until no rain will come for three and a half years until I call for it. You become a very irresponsible prophet. And then for three and a half years, even God himself has got to be busy to see how he can feed you. If you send the raven. <laughs> because when you are in a position of a prophet, I mean, even God listens to what you say. He says there will be no rain, no moisture, nothing until I call for it. The message and the messenger are one. The message and the messenger are one. Some went for 40 days past, no rain came. Somebody was on position. Amen. The prophet said, no rain will come down until I call for it. For three and a half years, it happened. But somebody was on position. God had to feed him by the brook chariot. And had to command ravens to feed him. A man that had said, let there be, let there be drought. 
for three and a half years. But when you are in your position, brother, you activate an anointing. The way the ravens love meat and carry a biscuit, which is not oven fresh, heaven fresh. Oh. Do you think it would come like that? The way you even pack your KFC and McDonald's. God has got order. <laughs> the prophet will, be, I mean, will have it, not just, you know, it has it is got, it has swollen on the dust. No. God has order. Brings it, brother, in an oven, fresh, steaming hot. The way the prophet loves it. And he says, the first raven, where's the third one? <laughs> Your position activates an anointing. Amen. Are we together? Amen. Brother Brown says to paragraph 279, we all know that the modern church in its present condition and its present state is in no condition to finish up the great commission that God gave the church for this day. How many Pentecostals can say amen? We are oneness, twoness, threeness, this, that, the other. We fast, fight, one this one, one is that one. And then every one of them, afraid to face the world, right down to the test. You know what they tell me about? I can't help it. I can't believe that. I don't care what he does. See, see, shows how many mom and papa you have. You might be in a state of a, in a state priest, but uh, someday you might be this or that the other. You better be a son of God. And we know that the church could not, the Pentecostal church, by no means, by no means, could not carry out the last day messenger in its present condition. Amen. Somebody has got to come to their present condition. Amen. Until you move to your present condition, there's nothing that is going to happen. Let me tell you tonight, the devil reacts to your future. Is not worried about your past. When you start to look into your future, the devil will have a headache. He, will, he does not know what to do. But when you continually look behind you and see what you have done, he will keep you out of focus. That's why the greatest mirror on your vehicle is the one, the screen that is before you. And the rear view mirror is little. You don't check it always. But as long as you continually look behind the things that are behind you, you will never make it. Put your great focus on the future. What do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? Do you realize your purpose here? Brother Branham, at one point in time, he was eating at a restaurant. And outside, as he was eating in a restaurant outside, there came two gentlemen that looked like him and Uncle Fletcher. And then as they were going past, Brother Billy Paul says, Daddy, these two men that looks like Uncle Fletcher and you. And when Brother Branham looked outside, he saw those two men. The Holy Ghost told him, if you do not preach this gospel, you will become a bum like those two that are walking outside. In other words, there were people that besides Brother Branham and Uncle Fletcher, there were people that God brought here on earth so that he could, they could have the same physical appearance but have a different spiritual condition. They were born and raised for an example so that the prophet could look and say, I would never want to be like that. I would never want to be like that. And God will give a stern warning and say, if you do not preach this gospel, you will be a bum like those two. You and Uncle Fletcher. And when he realized God is not playing here, 
And even tonight we are not playing church. We must know who we are. God has raised somebody. Somebody gave birth at hospital. He said, I've got a child and I shall call him this name for an example. That you can see that that man looks like me. Had it not been for grace, had it not been for the amazing grace, I could be like that man. But when we have been 10,000 years, bright shining, hallelujah, as the sun, God took something. It's only the grace of God that could separate what Brother Branham was and those two people that way. It's only the grace of God. But God raised those two men for an example. That the prophet could see. If you leave this message, you'll be reduced to that. Hallelujah. And I believe you are not the second copy I'm talking about. I believe you are the original copy. Hallelujah. If you leave this message, you are watching the people, your schoolmates. And I was telling, I was telling last week I was telling the youths, and I said of all the 49 boys and girls in my class for grade 7, only three of us are remaining. Orson Matso and Simangaliso on law and the medicine side. The rest have died. The time we grew up, it was the time, maybe the time that we were around 16, 17, being sexually active at that time around our age mates. But we were protected by the blood. We had already made the decision. But at that time, that's when HIV and AIDS was thriving. And there was no ARV. There was no treatment. People died like flies. From, from a class of 49, there's only three that remains. If you don't have a purpose in this, in this life, and if you think God raised you just to have to consume alcohol and have that nicotine-loving demon in you, to be a drug addict, oh, brother, sister, and if you don't value this body, and you feed it with, 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 with cocaine, God will surely destroy it. Amen. And if you don't know, this is the temple of the living God. And you don't have a purpose. You don't know why God gave you this body. God, the same God, will destroy it. Amen. And I said to one HIV patient, I said, if God can forgive the adultery that you committed, God can take away the HIV that came with that adultery. So as long as God can forgive that, that adultery, the HIV case becomes useless. But if you cannot repent from that adultery, that HIV will still remain. But if you come sincerely before the Lord and say, Lord, I give it all. I cast it into a sea of forgetfulness. The purpose of God according to election. Brother, this thing will be dissolved in a sea of forgetfulness. You go to a machine and you test you HIV negative. Because God, when you are in your place, you activate an anointing. Amen. Are we together? The parts of our lives will differ. Amen. Amen. Uh, in the Bible, there is the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden. Eden means in his presence. Eden means in his presence. So God created man. So a man, even in the presence of God, he was lonely. Even a man who is Holy Ghost filled he must marry. Because even in the presence of God, man was lonely. So young man, you must marry. Because even in the presence of God, filled of the Holy Ghost, you need a woman. For you to be fully functional, Because God created a helpmate for you. You need that help. You must not uh, conduct a prayer meeting to look for socks. You need somebody just to bring you a pair of socks. 
You need that. Amen. You need a man. You need a woman in your life. Even in the presence of God, men remained alone. And God knew and ordained somebody to fill that portion. Amen. There are certain things that God can give you. There are, there are certain things that God will say, these ones you have got to, you have to make sure you get it yourself. You must get married. And when you marry, they are children. They save a purpose. And everything under the sun saves a purpose. Now, if you marry the wrong person, or if you get married to a wrong person, and every day your husband or your wife is a prayer point, Father, I commit my wife into your hand. You know this woman. Father, you know this husband. How he irritates me. Physically, emotionally abuses me. But when you get married to a good husband and good wife, every day you sing, this is like heaven to me. This is like heaven to me. When I, sing, when I get out there, I sing and I shout. There is a purpose. Do you know there is a purpose for quiet time? During the hustle bustle of the late hour, when you come to church, that saves a purpose. You start all your mind battles They subside. Do you know the purpose of songs? To get you into the channel. Do you know the purpose of preaching? To bring the seed in you. Everything is a purpose. When you don't know the reason why a scripture has got to be read, when you don't know the reason why a quotation has got to be read, this is not ritual. There's a purpose. Amen. There's a power of transformation that comes by the hearing of the word. And the word gives you the power of a sound mind. That trash is going to be taken off you and be given the power of a sound mind to think right. Amen. There's a purpose. But if you just think, ah, you know, we are just used to this thing. You can just open the Bible. This is God's word. And there is a purpose for that. God, rich in mercy, put in a little girl called Esther the material to stop genocide. And Esther comes and he says, such a time as this, God has raised me. Esther realizes her position. And when she realizes her position, she says, if I perish, let me perish. Because she knew her purpose. It was not about Mordecai. It was not about what the king has promised. It was her purpose. The moment she realizes her purpose, an anointing was activated. And I think the king was getting out of his mind. And he says, even half of the kingdom, when she was on her position, she activated the certain anointing. And the king said, even half of the, my kingdom, I can give it to you, Esther. What is your request? With such an open check, Esther still did, was not affected by anything. And she said, I'm not worried about the half of the kingdom, but let my people go free. Even brother, sister, with all this, act, all this natural accusation, her people still remain. 
And it even activated an anointing. And until the king did not know what to say. Oh, hallelujah. When you are in your position, you activate a certain anointing. Amen. And when David looked at Goliath, when David looked at Goliath, Goliath for 40 days and 40 nights, who is among you? He reduced a, one, a million dollar battle to one man. And he says, give me one man. I don't want to shed much innocent blood. Give me one man. And when the devil comes, brother, he doesn't come, brother, cheap. He comes with, with bold declarations. Give me one man. I want to reproduce the, I want to reduce this battle to one man. Give me one man. If I fight and, and he wins, then you take over and, and David. Hallelujah. Stood up and said, For this cause was I raised. For this purpose came I. Hallelujah. And when he looked at Goliath, and at that time, the king was looking for money, popularity and everything. And everything, and he says, David said, and, David, and so the king offered all his equipment. But David says, this has never been proven. If you have a purpose, brother, you don't borrow things. God equips you. He says, this has never been proven. But I work with what God has proven. Amen. The same God that fought for me with the lion is the same God that fought for me with the bear. And he says, here yeah, I stand. This uncircumcised Philistine stands here and defies the armies of the living God. Oh, hallelujah. David was not looking at anything. He was looking at one simple thing called circumcision. To him, it meant the difference. And it activated an anointing. Amen. Remember, he had five stones as the musicians come. Remember, he had five stones. When he took those five stones, he just took one of them. I believe he was very irresponsible. He just threw it in a general direction. But the unseen hand took it from the general direction and went spot on right to the target. And Goliath was killed. That position activated in anointing. Amen. I don't know how many Goliaths you are fighting. But brother, the moment, sister, you stand on your position and you lift up your hands and say, Lord, I am a daughter of a king. You activate a certain anointing. And when you activate an anointing, you bring every spirit into your submission. Hallelujah. There is a purpose why God raised you. Amen. If you cannot find the purpose of God, why you are here? There's a book called Pilgrim Holiness, which Abraham Lincoln used to read. And in that Pilgrim Holiness, there's a portion where they call about the market of vanity. And it says they're buying nothing and selling nothing. You buy something, you sell it at a loss. They are, just, they are just shouting. They are just shouting, making noise. Nothing is going on. Amen. No man has got a purpose. We just come to church. Someone is singing, I love you. Because he first loved me. <laughs> Amen. There's no purpose. You can activate an anointing. You are right there at the position. Amen. The all-wise God knows how to equip you. And as you find your purpose, you don't know how many Jonathans will be introduced to you. When David realized that God put him in that position, in his, even in his wildest imagination, he never thought support would come from Jonathan, the son of a king who wants to slay him. And Jonathan would betray his own father and releases the information to his friend David. And the love between Jonathan and David supersedes the love between a man and a woman. Do you know when you move to your position, God will give you friends. 
God will give you brothers, sisters that support you. Amen. Don't get worried. Nobody will stand with me. Don't worry, brother, sister. As long as you are in your position. God will raise people that will believe in you. Don't get worried. Do you know somebody is waiting that I preach for them? Do you know somebody is waiting that if only brother said he could lay me my, his hands over me? Do you know somebody is just wishing, maybe just one minute? Do you know somebody is dying to hear you sing? Do you know somebody is just dying to shake your hand? That's why everyone in this world is celebrating celebrities. There may be it's a ball game, they bring a ball and give it to him. I want it your signature. They just want to be identified. Because they realize this man has made it in life. Because he has identified his purpose. And I believe if you identify your purpose, brother, when, when, you, when you speak, everyone gives an ear. When you move to position, amen. Do you know why thousands will come to Brother Brana? Because he found his position. Do you know why? In Arkansas, for 11 days, people will be on a queue for prayer line. Because they realize that man has got a position. And even when he's coming out of resting, the anointing will be there. Because he knew his position. Oh, believer, believe the purpose. Hallelujah. May God show you your position. When he has shown you your position, you are not worried about what people say. You are not worried whether I must bring that one. God, in his own predestinated time, you bring a Jonathan for you. You bring somebody that will stand by you irregardless. No matter what you are going through, just find a purpose. Amen. May God richly bless you tonight. Shalom. Let's stand on our feet. Amen. I love him. I love him. Amen. I love thee. I love thee. Love him be because he first love. Love me. I love him. I love him. I love him. Because he loves me. And Salvation. Let's personalize him. I love you, Lord. Oh, I love you. I love you. Love you. I believe he's here. I believe he wants to be identified with you. I believe he wants to reveal his purpose in your life. The same God that raised Esther. The same God that raised Alexandra the Great. 
and made his influence to be great among the people. He's the same God that raised William Branham with a message to influence and impact the people's lives. It only takes a man who knows their position, the believer's position, and heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Brother, sister, this is a challenge to you. Do you realize they are not just a biological accident? Do you realize God brought you here for a purpose? That's the million dollar question I have to know. Do you know him and his resurrection power? Have you met him? Has he shown you the path that you must trace? If a sycamore tree could fulfill the purpose of God, amen. If God would bring Joseph for a certain purpose, that he could bring his brother, that he could bring the brothers to the land that God saw him. And that all his brothers, he could save them. I believe there's a purpose. And if you have not identified that purpose, maybe you just raise your hand to God and say, Lord, I want to find my purpose in this life. God will bring the Jonathans in your life, the junctions in your life, people that will believe in you, people that will support you, people that will stand with your vision. Don't worry about all these things. Don't worry about the Goliath. You cut off his head as long as you stand on your position. Amen. May God richly bless you. Let's raise our hands together tonight. I love you. I love you. Love you because you fail. Love Love me and pray as my salvation. Oh, God. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you tonight. What an opportunity that you have given us tonight to come and stand before your presence. Lord, may we be a purpose-driven individual. We know our believer's position in Jesus Christ. You have chosen us, a peculiar generation, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, a holy priesthood. There's a purpose why you have chosen us. There's a purpose why we are here. There's a purpose, Lord God Almighty, why we are in prayer. Lord, your leadership and your direction is never a mistake. Lord God Almighty, and we are here to accomplish God's ordained purpose. If you could raise a sycamore tree and that could save a purpose, if you could bring two people that would look like William Branham and Uncle Fletcher so that the prophet could see the things that you would do to him if he disobeys this message. Lord, the same Lord has fallen upon us tonight. May we realize, Lord God, may we take courage, just like David, when we see Goliath. Just like David, may we know at an appointed time, you will raise a Jonathan that will support, that will stand with us in regardless. Lord, we thank you for your ways which are past finding out. I pray that you bless the young and the old. Lord God, might come down in our midst, reveal that purpose in our life. I pray, Lord God Almighty, for the pastor here with all the battles that he goes through, especially at this time, Lord. I pray that you calm that angry wave. I pray that you say, peace be still. Lord, heal the wife, heal the child, even in the hospital. Touch the mortal body. Transform it, Lord. Oh, God Almighty, pray. We pray as you commit even the youngsters in our midst. Lord, may we not lose them to the world. And may they find their purpose. We pray for the church elders. We pray for the light, Lord. May there be a unity of purpose. May everyone come to their own. Lord, God Almighty, perfect understanding why they are here. And for this cause, that's why you raised them, that they could be part of the bride, even over this side. Thank you for the wonderful time that you have had in your presence. Thank you for such lovely people that love the Lord. 
that have no any other motives but to worship thee, Lord. It's such a real gem to find such people like that. We have no, Lord God Almighty, anything else but to serve thee with a perfect heart. I pray that, Lord God Almighty, you bless them. Coming in and going out, be their satisfying portion. I pray, Lord God Almighty, and lay a blessing upon their lives, their desire to build thee a tabernacle. May you, Lord Jesus Christ, undertake for them. May you raise men and women with the same vision and for this people. We pray, Lord God Almighty, and commit each and everything into your hands. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray, believing. Amen and amen. God richly bless you. Amen. So I remember the last Sunday, the preacher saying, until we don't want to say goodbye. That's why I came back, because he didn't say goodbye. He just said, until. Uh, so that we don't close it, we just say, until. I love you all. Pray for us. Uh, I'll carry your greetings on the other side. And I've told them I've met very good people on this other side. Uh, many miles away from home, but I still find the people that love the word. May God richly bless you. If you love me, pray for me. Because I love you, I'll continue to pray for you. Uh, stand behind your pastor. Support everything that is honorable. And the God of the Bible will bless you. God bless you, pastor.
Jesus, we are here, Jesus, we are here, Jesus. Saints are dismissed.